Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Scoop's Garage. Um, today we're going to go over uh, some advanced dial caliper uses. Um, this will be a new kind of video for me. Uh, I'm just going to try and relax and uh, spit it out. Um, so bear with me. Anyway, advanced caliper um, uses. I uh, was skimming the internet trying to think of things to come up with and and that you guys would like to see and um, most everything that I saw on dial caliper use was uh, very basic stuff and uh, I thought I'd throw some advanced stuff at you guys so you could learn how to use it out on your factory floor so um, um, as we as we get started here I want to give you the big warning about uh, flexible calipers okay when you get into your cheaper calipers all right uh, the jaws of them have flex in them and they have it also up and down and they're not as accurate they do not carry an accurate dimension uh, they do not repeat um, so that's my warning my suggestion to use when you look at them on this um, in the store would be that you actually Grab them and feel how sturdy they feel. A, a good set of calipers needs to have a sturdy feel. Okay, they do make cheap, sturdy calipers because I have some. All right. Um, next would be uh, setting your um, calipers to zero. That's start one. Every time you touch your dial calipers, um, you need to check it for zero. And then you're ready to measure now you can also double check your calipers with a standard like this this is a one inch standard and you can see and you can also set your dial calipers with that one inch standard like that and spin it okay we're ready to go we know we're on one inch and we're ready to go all right um checking for zero okay if you're measuring a depth you always check for zero also so you want to take this uh, some calipers have a little bit of play i know this set does so every time i want to check a depth and use this rod for a depth i also check i reset zero so i just grab my thumb and i pull it down and spin it until you get zero and I'm not even going to do it but you guys get the point there we go zero lock it down and then you're ready to go all right um, always set zero um, when you pick up your calipers make sure they're right all right um, Another thing you can also use to check your zero on your your calipers is um, your one two three blocks. You can take your one two three blocks and they're so accurate it isn't even funny. Uh, you know we had a lot of fun with ISO, not wanting you to use your one two three blocks to set stuff, and it's kind of hilarious. You know that's a precision block. That's why you buy it. Anyway. <coughs> Here you go they think this will change over time too they want they you know they want you to have it recertified in a at a certain time and i, I find it kind of humorous uh, all right um next is uh we'll go out to um scribing and scribing with dials okay this is kind of a cool subject um Obviously, you can take your dials and you can uh, set them to whatever dimension you want. And you can scribe with them this way and scribe with them this way. Well, that's, that's awesome, but you don't want to wear out your dials, okay? The ends of your dials, you want to last a long time. So what you need to do is you need to set, or if you're doing single scribes, that's why your dials are fine. But what you need to do is take a set of dividers like this. These are dividers. 
and uh, come over to your scribe lines in your uh, if you're going to do multiple pieces and, and set your dividers on your scribes that you just made with your dial and then once you get that arc it'll be just right and uh, you got it figured out I mean it's awesome um, and then you can use your dials for uh, you know doing circles and 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 these tips you can always resharpen. You can resharpen these with a hand stone, a nice fine hand stone, and just file them back. They, they you know, they'll last a long time if you take care of them. Um, another way that you can use your dial calipers is when you're taking dimensions. So a lot of times you can't reach inside of stuff. So you'll use the inside outside dividers and you'll set them then you pick them up out of the place that your dials wouldn't fit in and you can check your dials this way like this okay um, and then it's the same same thing with the outside divider you can measure with them where you can't get your dials. I mean, a lot of times you'll run into interference trying to measure tight stuff. So you have to go to the old school stuff like this. And then when you come back up out of there, you'll measure it like that. Okay. Um, you can also use your dial calipers on um, your telescoping gauges like this and your hole gauges but I would recommend on your hole gauges that you use in a uh, micrometer but when you're just going quick and you're trying to idea drill bit or something you know dials are great dials are great um, these are your bases that attach to them I didn't really see much on bases either and this is where you get into the reset zero also. I'm going to put this on there, on there for you guys. I don't want to see how these work. Okay, so... I got it set up on my base. I'm going to check zero. Now I have a depth micrometer. Just like that. Just like that that easy. Now there's six inch bases. There's 12 inch bases, which here's my 12s. And then there is, uh, you can make your own, own bases like this. And this base here is for extended reaching off of stuff. And you have to measure like that. Uh, definitely more advanced uses. Um, another thing I want to cover is uh, head to toe. Um, head to toe is a, a, another way you can use your dial calipers um, and uh, when you measure you uh, would go from point A and open it up and measure to point B like this and it actually makes your dial calipers larger than your six inches so I can measure you know seven eight inches on the inside 
it needs to be parallel. It, it works best if it's parallel. Um, but uh, I can reach out seven, eight, nine inches with my six inch calipers and, and measure head to toe. Now, the trick to head to toe is um, head to toe plus dimension equals total. Okay, so on my dials I always write head to toe which would be for my 12 inches and then I've wrote it on my 6 inches but what you would do would you would you would take your hot dial calipers your 6 inch dial calipers and you measure them from head to toe just like that Okay, once you have that value, this value of the total dials, we're going to call that head to toe. Okay, so then you add that plus, uh, I'll do it right here. So, head to toe, head, head to toe, and then toe plus dimension so the head to toe plus dimension taken okay and that's what this is Head to toe plus dimension taken equals total. There, I spit it out. Um, um, that is a very useful tool. Uh, used it a lot. Um, also, I, I forgot to mention on scribing. When you scribe, another way to use your dials would be like you would open them up to the set dimension that you wanted. You would lay it be, beside your workpiece. Okay? And then you would mark it just like that. And <clears throat> that's a pretty accurate line, folks. So if you do that, you, you're, you're getting pretty accurate with your uh, precision marking. Um, I know there's other things that I had to say that I missed over, but I guess that's the way it goes. But, uh, anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching Scoop's Garage today, and please subscribe, like, and share.